Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I'm super stoked about today's guest that we have joining us today. Um, he is the founder and leader of Simple Success Coaching. He has been in e-commerce. He's done wholesale bundles. He has his own brand. I am not even going to waste any more time talking about that because he has such an amazing and interesting story that will be so beneficial to you guys. So I want you to please welcome with me Dustin. Dustin Reichman to the show. Dustin, it's so good to have you here. Hey, Kristen. So good to be here. This is one of the few places where I can talk about all the weird stuff I've done, and it makes sense for your audience. This is great. I know. It's great. Like, this is, I just love talking to people. That's just one of the reasons I started a, a, a YouTube and podcasting and everything to begin with, because I'm just fascinated um, by how people start business, get in business, and end up where they end up. So we're talking about everything from creating a marriage course all the way to creating these. By the way, the <laughs> podcast listeners, you can't see this. This is Fire Creek Snacks. We're going to talk all about this. They're beef sticks and some seasoning stuff that he, uh, Dustin so graciously sent me. And this are the last three left because my family literally devoured every single flavor that he sent. So we're going to talk about getting into that, why branding, marketing, and shifting in business is so important. So first, let's get a little bit of your background. What is this, this marriage course turned e-commerce, turned your own brand? Let's let's talk about that story. Yeah, and it even goes a little bit be past, back past that. So I actually started my professional career as an engineer, um, a civil engineer, and did that for a long time. And then while doing that, had numerous side hustles, uh, the first of which was engaged marriage, which still exists today. And that was marriage ministry my wife and I were doing in local churches and we just kind of had a message and a story we wanted to bring online so we started writing it was the heyday of blogging this was 2009 mm -hmm. um, so that's that's when that brand started and eventually we wrote a book and did speaking and we've got digital courses and, and a membership site there today so that's kind of my info product business that grew out of ministry and then we'll come back to this one there's a little bit of a side story that makes a lot of sense for your Amazon audience in like 2014 with uh, shin splints that I developed and something I did with that, but we'll, we'll come back to that. And then yeah, in 2018, I completely left engineering full-time on January 1st, made that leap into full entrepreneurship while my wife was a stay-at-home mom with three kids. So it was a cr crazy time and it kind of felt like a crazy big risk, but worked out really well for us. So in 2018, to support that change, I took on a bunch of marketing clients and everything from like online people to local, like my dentist was a client. So I like local business, marketing clients, online, offline, anyone that, that would listen to me, I would talk to them about marketing and they would hire me and it helped uh, replace my income. So that's really what we did in 2018. And that's super relevant because one of those local clients was a butcher shop and this butcher shop uh, was opening in my town and I walked in and found some products that I thought were amazing branding and just thought it was a really cool looking product. And then when I dug into it, I found out that it was actually created by the same person that owned this butcher shop. And he was a third generation owner. This is an old school butcher shop that was started in 1952. And this is the, the new location of it. So I found out who this guy was and offered to work with him on his butcher shop. We became friends. And then he told me, Hey, I've got this local brand that I've created called fire Creek snacks. And I want to bring it online. I don't know how to do it. And I said, we'll figure it out together. So I created a Shopify store and we ultimately ended up going on, going to a dozen trade shows together in 2019 and really grew the brand both on a wholesale and a direct consumer basis. So that's where Fire Creek came in. Uh, so I dropped a lot of my marketing clients and was mostly focused on Fire Creek, running Engaged Marriage, and then in publicly marketing Fire Creek uh, starting in 2020. Uh, because of COVID, we, we made a, had to make a lot of shifts like many people in our business. I said, I want to get alternative or creative ways to market direct to consumer. And so I started getting on a lot of podcasts and telling our brand story and our partnership story and our, our strategies and tactics around how we'd grown this brand. And it took off as I got a lot of podcast appearances. And then with the podcast appearances and just basically telling people what we did in public, I started getting a lot of inbound interest for coaching and people asking me how I got on the show or how I launched the brand or how I found a partner, you know, these kind of questions. And so in 2021, last year, I had over 20 one-on-one -on -one coaching clients 
that were just people that reached out to me because they were hearing me on podcasts talking about the Fire Creek story. And so that's evolved a bit. And so now I, I teach more in a, in a group setting, like a mastermind level for people to do that. Basically use partnerships and podcast guesting as a vehicle to, to grow their brands. So that's engineering to marriage, to meat sticks, to marketing. So that's, uh, so today I would say three quarters of my time is actually spent on the, the coaching business. And about 25% of my time is basically like a CMO role with Fire Creek. So we've hired out a lot of the day-to-day -day marketing and I more sit in a strategic role over our sales and marketing for that brand. So I'll take a deep breath and you can <laughs> ask me questions about all that. Yeah, that's a lot to unpack yeah, and such a journey and like over, over time, you know, I love how uh, all those things have shifted. What I'm curious about first that, that, that you have really hadn't said before is with the marketing, you didn't have formal training in marketing. You figured out marketing what, by necessity, by jumping into Fire Creek and realizing I needed to market some of this stuff and I needed to be part of that. And how was I going to bring this online? So that's what, what I find most interesting is that you didn't start out and go to college and have a degree in marketing. You figured out you were amazing at it by doing the work. And I want more, I want more of that story because yeah. I think a lot of people, I mean, I, I deal again with coaching clients all the time, just like you. And, and one of the number one things that keeps coming up is, is, well, I'm not qualified. I don't have a degree in that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, actually, you're learning what you're doing from the school of hard knocks, from the school of action, by just doing it, trying it, failing it, and figuring out what works instead of giving up. And I think that there's more to that side of the story than like, <laughs> I mean, we can create products and put them on Amazon and get, you know, have branding and stuff like that. But you've figured out the marketing side of, of even, I mean, let's just be real. These are just beef sticks, right? I mean, right. Jack's links or, <laughs> or slim Jim or whatever else it's about marketing. But at the end of the day, um, there's competitors, there's many other places to choose from, but you figured out a way to find a target market from a different angle. So you're not out there peddling at grocery stores necessarily. You're just spending your time on podcasts, telling people the story about the brand. And I think that's the most important conversation for today is really um, how, how our listeners, our clients, our customers can kind of come in and say, how can I do the same thing for something? You know, I've got people that sell everything from like HDMI cords and baby stuff all the way to like parts and accessories for vehicles and, you know, things like that. It's like, how do I have a, a brand story from something that seems a little bit insignificant? Right. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. And, and I'm sure you use this phrase pretty often, this idea of imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. This idea that who am I to do whatever I want to do, you know, mm -hmm. who am I to uh, teach engineering courses at a university, which is something I did, you know, I wasn't a quote unquote, you know, professor. Uh, and I've done a lot of stuff like that. And it actually goes all the way back to the origin with the engaged marriage story. You know, we were experiencing a lot of stuff in our marriage and we were going to retreats and we were learning and I was basically just writing what was going on in our life. But the people three steps behind us in that journey were following that and they really could relate to us getting out of debt. And having communication struggles and all that kind of stuff. And so I've had been asked that question, like, well, how do you have a book or how do you have like a marriage course? You're not a marriage counselor. And I'm, I'm not at all. I've just, I just share what we do, you know? And so it's this idea of this action provides clarity and it provides confidence. So Stop the same right thing there. happened. Yeah. With, Stop with, right there. That is yeah, something you guys write that down, listen, rewind it, write that there. It's, it's say it again. It's com it creates confidence, right? You said creates, yeah. clarity creates confidence. <laughs> yeah. Action. I would, I usually just say like you get clarity by taking action on yeah. things, but I think also an extension, if you do that repeatedly, you gain confidence and yeah. gain competence. And with the confidence comes more confidence, right? Exactly. So it's this idea of just repeatedly being uncomfortable and doing it anyway and taking action on, on stuff. And I know that may sound trite, but it's, no really true. So. That's literally the key. That's the key. That's the something that, you know, we, we both obviously are on podcasts a lot, have these successful things. And people ask that it's like literally taking action, calculated risk, taking action brings the confidence because you now know what to do and not to do. You don't have to be, like you said, a professional. You don't have to have uh, letters behind your name or some MBA or something. You just have to be a few steps ahead of someone else to help them on their journey. And so I think that that's like really important there. There too even with the marriage stuff it's like you don't have to have it all figured out you just have to have a couple pieces figured out in order to help people um to get to where you are you know and so i love yeah. i love that action action brings 
brings the confidence because you're taking it. You're taking the action. You're bring, you're getting clarity by deciding what's going on and what's not going on. And I think that's really important because so many people think, well, I'm not a marketer or I'm only on Amazon. How can I, how I hear the doubts, right? I hear all the sure. doubts. Everyone's thinking, oh, well, it's easy for Dustin or Kristen to come on yeah. here and talk on podcasts. Y'all, it wasn't easy in the beginning. <laughs> it was it was like red cheeks and sweating and like wondering what I'm going to say on these interviews. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't have to be that complicated because I hear people saying, well, I'm just on Amazon. I'm not going to go on podcasts and tell my story about my, my product or I don't have a product like this. And I'm here to give you the confidence that just taking the action will will build up that muscle. It's what you're working yeah. on. It's going to be but, sore at first. And I think, and I think too, like, is this may all sound fancy, like our little claim to fame is we we got the seven figures of sales with Fire Creek without any paid ads, which is pretty unusual for e-commerce and actually without any, much of an Amazon presence as we'll talk about. But the if you step back though and don't think Dustin special, think this guy is selling $2 meat sticks on podcasts. Like that's the worst business model ever. And so, you know, or is it? I did that for only two, I was only 20, it was less, it was like two years ago that I was on my first podcast. And now some people have called me like a professional podcast guest because I sell all my stuff mostly by being on podcast. And you know what I mean? And like, I'm, I have a whole business now, simple success coaching, which was created out of the ether by showing up and talking about fire Creek on podcast and then responding to the market by doing that repeatedly. And then hearing people ask questions and saying, Oh, people are really interested in this. Then I systematized it. Then I talked people one-on-one Then I taught small groups. And now I teach at more of a mastermind level and all that's only two years ago, you know, and, it, and, uh, and again, you're talking to a guy that was, I have an engineering degree and I'm, so it is, I think I hopefully that. that's what people hear in my story is yes. like, all I did was try different things and then see what sticks. So I, I got to rewind that because it's so important for everyone to understand what you said. You said, I'm selling $2 meat sticks on podcasts. And let me just rephrase that and like put, let everybody know who you and I have done podcasts for, you know, many times. So we understand the behind the scenes, but how much does it cost you to be on a podcast? Zero dollars. <laughs> Zero marketing dollars, y'all. So right. if you are willing to be brave and talk about your subscription boxes or your Amazon, like I'm teaching people to create these. You know, I have great clients that are out there like making these subscription, not even subscription boxes, just gift boxes, like gift boxes for men, gift boxes for women, pet gift boxes, all this stuff. And if they're if all they have to do is jump on for free and talk about how their story and how it came up and how they created these products and how they're serving their customers. And all of a sudden you're getting sales. That's just for a $2 meat sticks. Could you imagine friends for your $50 gift box, which Dustin is going to be putting on Amazon very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about that off air, but we will bring it up because he told me I could throw him under the bus. So I'm <laughs> going to, um, but th what I'm trying to say is don't miss that. It, it's all about bravery. It's all about saying, yes, I can actually market a $2 product on a free podcast with no ads, with no nothing, nothing. You can lead them directly to your Amazon listing or to your website or to whatever, just by showing up and talking about how you got started. You know why? Because people don't buy beef sticks because they're starving. They bought your story. That's exactly. why brand stories are so important. They, we, like, I now have a connection. Like, forget Jack's links and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I have a connection with Dustin and Fire Creek. And now I know when I eat this, the, my favorite one is like the sweet and spicy and the, the hot ones. Um, but I know that. I know the person that created this brand and I heard his story and I respect that. It's, it's so much different than just like, let's just buy a product from the grocery store. You create a connection when you're talking about your brand and your story, which then creates sales. People want to support you in that. So I don't want everyone to just brush by that and miss it for a second. Like your brand story, even if it's a guy in my town came here and he was a butcher <laughs> for 52 years or whatever. And you've got this long, I mean, I'm getting the story wrong here, but like the whole idea of it's just a story. You have a deeper connection now that you have more knowledge about where this brand came from or who it's supporting and how it's supporting. I mean, and we've all heard of these things. The thing is, is if people aren't hearing your story and understanding your story, they might just pass up your brand anyway, because they, they, they have more of a connection to something else. So I just don't want anyone out there that has that imposter syndrome out there. We all have it in some form or another that, well, I don't really have a story or my brand is just some boring this and that. But like, we just talked about a millions of dollars of beef stick sales from showing up for free and talking about it for 30 minutes to one hour. 
Do y'all yeah. have 30 minutes to one hour to talk about your brand or your products or your gift boxes or whatever else? Because we just heard the proofs in the pudding. Uh, over a million dollars of beef stick sales because of showing up on podcasts. Zero paid ads. Now, do you have paid ads on Amazon? Uh, no. And we, we, and I will clarify, we now do paid ads for Fire Creek, but our base was built, the first seven figures plus was built without any paid ads. Um, of course, then we've got product market fit. We, we can talk about our packaging. We, you know, we've branded things. Once we under, really understood, you know, then it was way easier to actually do paid ads and make it scale. But I'm a huge advocate of having a lot of client contact in the early days. And one of the best ways to do that is podcast interviews, because we talk about clarity. If you really want to get clarity on like how to tell your story and what people actually care about within your story, because we all have a hundred different versions of our story we could tell being interviewed on a few podcasts and, and getting into that, getting those reps in will provide like crazy clarity. And then and for us, I was doing that and on the whole, so that's, that was direct to consumer. So I'm trying to understand what do people on the internet care about and why would, why would that, what would trigger them to want to support us and buy this thing? Now in our, in our business, we also have a wholesale side, meaning we sell our stuff to people who resell it, like into brick and mortar stores, right? That's a very different customer. I'm trying to sell to the shop owner who's trying to make money with my product. So while I'm doing the podcast, we're also traveling and going to trade shows. And in that case, we're sampling to store owners. Like we, I've, I toe to toe have sampled more than 5,000 times. So Imagine 5,000 times I stood toe to toe with someone who I'm trying to show my product to and say, this would sell well in your store. Here's why. And like, here's our packaging, here's our story and doing that and, and having them sample in front of me, uh, you know, pre COVID um, there's nothing that could replace that. Like, and, and I hated it. It was, I'm an introvert, like standing for 12 hours on the trade show floor and doing that was horrible. And I did it for 2019, like the whole year. Um, but I think that's one of the reasons we've had so much success in that channel is because we did the work and we took the action to see what people cared about. So for most people listening, that may or may not be relevant, but the direct consumer side is way easier. I can sit behind a microphone and I can like get booked on podcasts and like literally show up, have fun, meet new people, tell my story. And there is that direct sale. Like, yeah, have them go buy your stuff on Amazon. And what's really cool when you do that is what you, what you don't see is that you're planting seeds. Right. And like every, every podcast experience, it's not just podcast, but every partnership like that marketing partnership, that's relationship based plant seeds that you will ultimately reap. And you may reap them with three sales on Amazon today, or you may reap them with some really outsized results. And I've got those stories too. Like we were recently accepted into Walmart and that whole journey started with me being on a podcast in 2020. Mm -hmm. And we had a purchase order this year for $550,000 from a subscription box company that started with me being on a podcast in 2021. And it's not like that, you know, in those cases, the guy at Walmart heard the podcast and said, I'm going to put him in my store. But it was that seed that was planted that created a relationship with someone who made an introduction who, you know, and that those kind of stories I find are the not stories, those kind of results I think are the most powerful. But even if you just got the direct result that you're referring to, like you made more sales on Amazon by doing this free activity that, is fun when you learn how to do it and, and enjoy it. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I can talk about this stuff all day, obviously. So I'll be quiet. Oh, no, no, it's not for everyone. But I tell you what, it doesn't mean it has to be for that person. You know, it, it's more it seems a little more genuine when it's coming from the person that did it. But even a brand representation of we, you know, we at Fire Creek, it doesn't mean like yeah. I have to be owner and operator. It could literally be we at Fire Creek. That This is our story, our story as part of a team. So maybe yes. you're I mean, it's interesting that you say that you're introvert, because the fun thing about interview is, is it like they're short, they're short term, it's you and a microphone and another person. So you can be an introvert and still do that. I can't imagine you at the trade show though. I've done, I do trade show walkthroughs at, at my workshops with people, teach them how to buy things from people like you oh, for you their go. wholesale bundles. Right. Yeah, and perfect. so, um, which um, you guys are going to be looking for this. Is this the official throwing under the bus? Dustin is going to be debuting his <laughs> Fire Creek Snacks box on Amazon because he has it on the website already. So go to firecreeksnacks.com and go see the box. But I'm encouraging him and his Amazon team to put that wholesale bundle on. Um, it's basically their private label bundle. But the idea there is that it's more of a... Um, on Amazon, you can take advantage of more of the gift market there rather than just, oh, I really like 
like these and I can go, you know, obviously you can go down to Walmart and buy them pretty soon, whatever, but right. on Amazon, the, that gift market and getting your brand even more out there and being and expanding into that is um, really just, it's another marketing tactic that you can use. Most people are coming from your website and you've got some Amazon sales and I've got some Walmart sales, but why leave the market untapped, right? So right. Um, I think of that. So you had some Amazon experience before, um, you know, before you got into the Fire Creek and all that. So tell us a little bit about that. It was, I would call it the accidental, um, like wholesale bundle back in the day. So it was, it was very accidental. And it's yet another example of basically sharing a life experience, sharing, you know, it's like a lot of people will say, I don't, you know, they have, they want a business idea. And I'm like, well, tell me some obstacles you've overcome in your life or tell me some things, you, your hobbies, tell me what you really enjoy. So for me, this was like circa 2013, 2014, I believe. Um, I got invited to do this Tough Mudder race, which is like a very difficult obstacle course. Super hard. <laughs> yeah. And I realized it was 13 miles long and I hadn't ran a mile since high school. And, I'm, and this was like, I'm in my early thirties at this, at that time. And so I, I take the challenge. I all do it. So I start running. I develop shin splints, which if anyone's familiar with that, it's like this intense pain in the front of your shins when you run, when you're fat and out of shape and shouldn't be running. Um, and so I got those and I'm like, this is horrible. And I got this race to train for. So I just started doing a bunch of research, like on YouTube videos and stuff, like how are people treating these or getting rid of them? And I kind of took bits and pieces from different stuff and found something that really worked well for me. And it like relieved my pain pretty quickly. It was just like a combination of like foam rolling, icing, stretching, and things like that. So I made a video. I don't remember why. I think, I think it was through my engaged marriage channel, but I just like made a video of me like on the floor, basically saying, here's how I treated my shin splints, you know, and, uh, and it, the video kind of took off on YouTube. I was like, this is interesting. People ask me a lot of questions in the comments. And I'm like, this is, this is pretty cool. And so I just started telling everybody like what, what I was doing. I'm like, well, I got these ice packs, I got this foam roller and then I, did, I got these rubber bands and I do the stretch. And, and, uh, eventually I was like, yeah, this to be actually be a pretty cool business idea. So again, I'm no doctor, obviously I'm not a physical therapist. I'm some fat guy who got, got shin splints, <laughs> but I packaged all this stuff. I think it's pretty similar to your model. I didn't own any of it. None of it was branded, but I have found out like how to contact this ice pack company, this gel pack company directly. And I said, how many do I have to buy to get wholesale pricing? And it wasn't that much. So I just bought a bunch of them and they shipped them to my house. And I found like the smallest, cheapest, but still high quality foam rollers I could find. Same thing. I, I became a wholesale customer of theirs. And I think like the rubber bands I was buying in bulk off of Amazon, I was just cutting them up myself into the right lengths. And but I think the key here is then I added, I took basically screenshots from the video and I made like a little three page PDF, well, physical paper guide for the box. And it was like, here's how to use the stuff in the box. Um, and I put that all on a white box and I called it the shin splints treatment kit. And, uh, I put it on Amazon and it actually sold really well. And I, I changed my YouTube video to direct people to Amazon to buy the stuff. And so it was a nice little business. My kids at the time helped me pack the boxes. We always had a bunch of boxes sitting in the garage ready to go. And we'd slap shipping labels. And it was, it was a good side hustle that was still in my engineering days as well. Um, at some point I just kind of got tired of it. And I think the video kind of lost its it's luster. Um, you can still find it. I think it's called like five minute shin splints fix or five minute shin splints. I think it might actually be cure, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend using that word um, for FTC reasons, but yeah. I got away with it. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny though. And that's, so I, I was very much an accidental Amazon wholesale box creator. Wholesale bundler. <laughs> yeah. Wholesale bundler. I, I did it all on accident, but I just did it out of sharing my experience. And I add a little bit of intellectual property or like it's just this little simple training manual mm -hmm. and it really made it set apart from anyone putting all this stuff together from my like people just wanted the convenience in the video like i'm like here's yeah. all the stuff i'm using you can go buy it yourself That's but i'm point. putting it all in a box and i'm putting it with a and it's going to be a good price for you and i'm putting a, a, a training manual with it and people loved it the, the thing i love about your version of wholesale bundles here is the marketing side of it you actually started with solving a problem, which is what I tell people all the time with wholesale bundles. Like we're not just out here to make money on something. We're actually out here to help people solve problems. And when I say problems, you're in your case, you're solving a shin splint problem with, from your own experience. These are the three products that I use to get rid of my shin splints because I, I, what do you call yourself? Like a, a fat guy running yeah. or like that gets shin splints or I'm out of shape or yours. Everybody knows if you're first starting running shin splints 
are a huge problem. Yes. You're solving a problem with a few products. Like it's a DIY type thing. Someone doesn't have to buy yours, but you made it so convenient for them to not only watch the video. So you guys, this is external marketing. This is, I put a short video on YouTube showing people how to use the product. And now you can actually use that on Amazon as well. However, I don't recommend it because that's still all internal for Amazon. If you want to get people off of Amazon coming to your wholesale bundle, you can make a quick video of yourself or someone else or like this is that this is the best way that I figured out how to solve my shin splint problem and how many millions of people uh, have shin splint problems that I need to solve. And if they can literally buy something, add to cart with one link, convenience and speed is everything. So because of that, that that's how that formula worked for you. Um, yeah, one other thing real quick, the need. this may be relevant, just this just popped in my head. So after I was selling the stuff on Amazon, I was thinking of other ways to market. So I made, I beefed up the training manual a bit, added some more reference material, and I made a Kindle book out of it for like $1.99. I put the Kindle book on Amazon for people looking for like how to solve, how do I fix shin splints or whatever. And that book sold decently. And then the book, of course, linked back to my Amazon listing and said, well, if you, all the stuff I'm telling you in this manual, if you just want it shipped to your house in a box this week, just go buy it off Amazon. I already knew they're Amazon customers because they bought a Kindle book. So that's, I I don't know if that if that could be relevant for some people. It's yeah. it's remarkably easy to publish a Kindle book as long as you don't oversell what it is. Like I would put right in the description, this is a 15 page manual that's going to help you address shin splints within you know a 30 minute read. So people didn't think they were getting like a novel. Yeah, that's so important. It's just cross marketing. It's just putting another thing out there, uh, another uh, way for people, other customers. So it's not just Amazon. You've gotten people on Amazon and you already know they're Amazon customers, but then you've got the YouTube video that supports it. And like, we all know that life isn't always set it and forget it. Right. But honestly, how much time and attention did you really have to put into that? Once you created the assets, you created the product in the box and the system for all that you ship it into FBA, you've got your Kindle book now that's out there. And then the YouTube video, other than that, what really is it that sells this product? So it's all front loaded. And then you can just kind of make sure that it's maintaining itself while you're creating the next product. That's what I'm thinking for my wholesale bundle clients is that you get one, you get it all established and moving, and then you can add more to that. You can see, mm -hmm. you know, as it's all about solving that problem or meeting that need and whether it's shin splints or a colicky baby or a rusty marriage, you know, right. all of these things can have products that solve problems that that can be marketed on Amazon. So um, I just, I love that story because number one, it's um, it's all of the things I teach for wholesale bundles, always having some sort of intellectual property, whether it's your um, whether it's your branding that, that's your part of your property or creating an asset, creating something that someone else isn't going to duplicate. Because let's be honest, you said all the items were generic and you could pick mm -hmm. up these, you know, resistance bands and some foam rollers and things like that from wherever. But what you brought to the table that had value was number one, the packaging of it. It's not like you asked your customers to go to four different links and buy four different generic right. things. You took the time and energy to put it together, which they already perceive as valuable. So this is why the wholesale bundle model works so well is because customers like us, we recognize that. I recognize that like a package of beef sticks with some seasonings like these in one package saves me time and energy of shopping around for a gift, for example, or this person's gonna solve my shin split problems with, uh, I don't know what the kit costs at that point, but it was just like- It was like 50 for, bucks. Five yeah. minute video and 50 bucks. I don't have to be in pain anymore. Where do I sign? You right. know, that's, those are the kinds of things. So whether your marketing is, you know, what I call uh, like backdoor marketing, best you can do, you know, because we're not marketers. Um, I think that that's just something people need to, to really remember and understand about this is that I didn't start as a marketer. I'm a stay at home mom with a high school education. <laughs> yeah. and that's what most people don't realize is that like, you don't have to have a bunch of, you know, letters behind your name or a marketing degree or take all these courses to do that. You have to solve problems for people and they pay you for that. For sure. <laughs> Whether it's shin splint kits or marketing or whatever it is, if you can solve a problem for a customer and your own problems that you've had, um, putting things together in, in convenience, um, that's what this society wants now. They want speed and convenience and variety. They want it at their door yesterday. They don't want to have to go to the store. So any ways that we can bring things to people to do that is is fantastic. 
Um, tell me a little bit more about your, since you, you got into marketing because you obviously stumbled into it, did it well for yourself. And you're like, wow. Um, when did you realize at that point, they were like, Hey, I'm kind of a marketer. I'm pretty good at this marketing stuff. Yeah. So I mentioned, I started engaged marriage in 2009, more as a writing project. And then in hindsight, I realized I was actually doing the same partnership marketing. I, what I do now on podcast guesting as the vehicle for it back then it was collaboration with other people in the space. Like I, I, led creating like this collaborative ebook, which was like a thing back in the day. So I guess I had an act for marketing, but would definitely didn't consider myself a marketer at all. But, you know, as I was moving from there, I'd say it was like 2014. So it's kind of a, it was probably around the time of the shin splints kit, actually. Um, There's about a five year period there where it was a hobby. And, and I did write a book and I and made an effort to sell the book online a little bit. But 2014, I got the bug of like digital marketing. Like I really understood what that it was a thing and that my business, that my hobby could actually be a business and it could generate thousands of dollars a month. And so I, 2014, I'd say is like when the switch flipped for me and the first, the major thing I did was took action. And I said, Hey, honey, my wife, like, I'm going to take a week of vacation, but instead of actually taking vacation with you and our small children, I'm actually going to go to Austin, Texas and go to a digital marketer, you know, training conference type thing. So I was taking time off of work to go learn how to do different work. <laughs> um, and so for that, there's a couple of year period there where I was basically practicing that. And I, I was using engaged marriage as my toolbox or my sandbox, I should say, to practice stuff. I created a funnel and I did like lead magnets, grew my email list. That's when I created the membership site. So it was that, that period. And I would say by 2017, so it's about a two or three year period where I was just practicing and then it was getting better at it. That's when I really started taking on clients. And that's when I really got the itch to leave my engineering job. So summer 2017 is like the time I had this like epiphany moment where I'm like, hey, my identity has been completely tied up in engineering and I can go try something different. And what you know, if it doesn't work, I can just go be an engineer again. Like for some, some reason I had this block and I couldn't ever feel that. But I finally felt that in 2017. And so at that time, then that's when I had the conversation with my wife and my kids and said, I'm going to be working like an insane amount for the next six months, because by the end of this year, if it all works out, I want to quit my engineering job, be a full-time entrepreneur. And that's what I talked about earlier. I just started taking on any client I could find. I built this like war chest basically of, of, of money to be able to take this risk. Cause again, I was a sole income earner. Um, so I, I would say it was 2017 is when I would start calling myself, I'm a marketer and you can hire me to do stuff. And I was building websites, Facebook ads, Google ads, Google my business, uh, just strategy bundles. Like I was doing like kind of everything, which I do not recommend. But in hindsight, I'm really glad because it gave me so much weird, varied experience uh, <laughs> that it really helps me now in coaching people. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's kind of where the marketing education comes in. But yeah, I don't like you said, I don't have any degree in marketing. I don't have any degree in marriage counseling. I'm so glad that you yeah. said that and that that's true because I think so many people or experts or, or people out there looking for stuff like that is that you don't always need someone. I mean, I'm, I'm all about professionals. Like I'm not going to tell you that somebody that's performing backyard surgeries is going to remove my you know kidney if I need right. that. I mean, let's right. be real. But when we're talking about marketing, we're talking about um, releasing products, we're talking about business. There's, you can get a business degree, you can have a business degree, but you don't actually learn the things till you do the things. Right. And then you realize, hey, uh, we, we've had plenty of conversations with friends, with people that, that we, you know, even just like you said, you don't have to be a marriage counselor with some certificate or degree to let everybody know how you were able to solve your problems, right? Yep. I mean, like, I don't have a degree in foreclosure, but I can tell people what the process looks like feels like and how you can come out of it because that's yeah. my experience yeah. and that doesn't mean you have to be a professional um i don't have to have five houses foreclose on me for some for me to share my experience <laughs> to have somebody right. else be helped by that and yeah. so um that's what i love about these things is that we're all you know if we have a dedication to helping people and serving people um and only being one step ahead we know that we can have that i'm not sure if you know that but the mommy income logo is actually 
people helping people. No, that's awesome. It's yeah. Like that, that was my whole goal is to be like, okay, I just know this much more than you. And I'm just reaching back to help you pull you up with me. I want everyone with me. Or I love when my students surpass me and they're like, yes. okay, I've learned so much and I'm growing. I'm like, that's, that's my purpose in life is really to, um, to serve and help others reach their highest potential and their highest desires. And, um, you know, just have a hand out to be able to help and, and serve those people that want to. And so I love, I love that that I suppose neither one of us are officially qualified, yet we are qualified because we're taking action, we're learning, we're failing, we're getting back up, we're trying things differently. Um, I can tell uh, based on, you know, just some of the, the language and stuff that you're using that there's there's a faith base underneath this, right? 100%. So, um, yeah. If you don't mind, if, that, if that's like off limits, or like we're not talking about that, but because I'm a God girl myself, I want to I wanted just briefly expose that because I think it's also important. It's part of my own story of people like, well, how are you so successful? I have this, I'm like, well, that's a big part of it is um, the direction from God and really leaning on um, not just my own understanding. And so can you a, a little bit about how that direction kind of helps you as well? Because I know you said you're in some ministry with your, your engaged marriage and things like that, but how has that carried you through all these transitions? Because a lot of them are scary. I mean, you're talking about being the main breadwinner of the family and telling your wife, like, I'm going to be quitting engineering and going yeah. into something else. And it takes a lot of faith and a lot of risk. And um, let's just, let's just be honest about those things because yeah. I think that, that there's a piece there that a lot of people don't like to talk about. Um, but that's one of the bases for me is how do you have so much risk tolerance? It's because of faith. So I just wanted to know if that's the angle by which you're approaching life as well. It hundred percent is. Yeah. And I'm happy to share. Um, one of my core values is transparency. So Everything I say is true and like sometimes I overshare, but I, I do like to share because I, I value that in other people. Like to let me let me see the real stuff. You know, like what do you what's really going on? Um, so yeah, I mean there's definitely the I'm a Christian, a Catholic, um, got baptized when I was 20. So this was like an adult decision. This was something that I've felt called to do. Um, and so I've been pretty I've been very active in my faith since that time. And yeah, the, the, definitely that thread is through all of this, this idea of faith, this idea of stepping, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of, I guess you say risk, but a lot of, there's been a lot of instances in my life where I knew there was something deeper, there was something I was going towards, but I couldn't see it. But I knew the only way to ever see it was to take the next step. And when you take one step, then the next step appears, right? And you can, in hindsight, my story, as weird as it may be, and as, as unique as it may be, it actually makes, the dots all connect looking forward, you put me in, you know, dust in 2008, I'm an engineer nine to five showing up in a shirt and khakis every day and driving 45 minutes to work and had two kids at that time. And, and, uh, okay. Now you're like, people pay you a lot of money to lead them through like getting on podcasts. Like I didn't even, hadn't even listened to a podcast before, you know, and that's, and it, and it is what, and I guess in, uh, it's 14 years. So it's a long time, but those steps that we outlined, from engineering to like taking the leap and like trying something on the side and, and then writing a book about marriage. Like I would have never guessed that. And then like speaking on stages from that and then, yeah. And then, yeah, getting pulled into digital marketing and, but in, in, in that time, like I didn't have the full faith. I, I think, I think I, someone actually said this to me this weekend because it was my aunt, she was here visiting and she's like, well, you probably regret like spending all that time in engineering because she sees I'm having a lot of success now as an entrepreneur. And I said, no, actually I don't at all. I said, I probably stuck with it like seven years too long, you know, in hindsight, I did it for 17 years in total. And like, but I think those first 10 were very foundational and I don't think I could have done any of the stuff I'm doing without that foundation. And so, um, but my point being for seven years, <laughs> I kind of had this resistance, um, where I was doing a lot of stuff on the side while still working a lot and really stretched myself way too thin. And I, I used the word epiphany, I think, in, you know, mm -hmm. intentionally, but it's that 2017, not coincidentally at the time that I made this decision, I was involved in a men's group for a year, like a pretty deep men's group um, where we practiced discernment and we practiced like a lot, long meetings, lots of talking, lots of praying together. And it was like during that time that I finally said, I can actually leave engineering and, you know, I think God will provide this new path because that's where I feel called to go. But if I'm wrong, I can always just go back to engineering. Like, I, like it's crazy that, that, that it took that much, you know, in-depth study for me to like something that seems so obvious now. So yeah. And then I, I'm just like you, like, I love to serve. The reason I teach marketing, the type of marketing I do, um, I say podcast guesting, but in a bigger sense, I call it partnership marketing. 
And really what it is, is a way of getting in front of your target market in a way that's typically free, but uh, in a way that uh, serves the market, the people listening, it serves you and your brand, and it serves the host, the person who has that has already aggregated that attention. So podcast guesting is a really simple, obvious example of that. Subscription box placements would be another, um, any kind of speaking or media, but like that type of marketing that you know, I said, we'll, we'll do paid ads, we'll do the transactional things. Like that type of marketing I love because it's relational and you, you build deeper connections with people. You get to share your story. You get to talk about your Christian faith, you know, like, so I don't know, I guess it, my journey is not complete. I don't know what's beyond that, but I know that um, for now, like I, I've just only discovered through all this that I love leading small groups. I love leading masterminds and like some form of that coaching is going to always be part of my life, even when I'm quote unquote, you know, retired. So um, yeah, I don't know what God's got in store for me, but it's been very exciting. And uh, to, to this point. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I, there's, like I said, there's a weird common thread, maybe looking back through all those steps where meet six leads to podcast guesting, which leads to leading masterminds, which is something that I invested heavily in myself this year, earlier in the year, but didn't even really know what it was two years ago, you know, but now it's like what I do. So isn't that funny? I mean, like I, the stuff I'm doing, I, I didn't even have an awareness that it existed not very long ago. So Hopefully that's encouraging for people. So. I, I hope so too, because I think, you know, like, like it's, it's such a different landscape now than for, I'm going to say we, I'm assuming we're in the same age pool. Um, I mean, we don't yeah. have to go there, but I was born in 1980. I'm not scared of that. I was that. born um, in 79. So you're okay, right on. There we go. Yeah. So I was like, I, I figured we were in the same age pool. And I think, you know, when it comes to that, when we were growing up and like college and opportunities and things like that, like um, being a, a podcast host or, you know, all that yeah. was like, it was beyond our reach. It wasn't a thing that like, it it, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't like, I want to be exist. like 20, 25 years ago, being a YouTube influencer wasn't a job description. And now right. we have people making millions of dollars playing video games on, on YouTube, uh, yes. something none of us could ever have imagined. You know, when I was a little girl, I dreamt of being on star search, you know, like when I wanted to sing with a ball gown in front of a red curtain, like that was my dream. Um, I couldn't have dreamed up this because this didn't even exist. And yet following, taking all those small steps towards that. That's what I, that's one of the things I anchored to when you were telling your story here about your faith and different things is like, you don't need to have it all figured out. You have to have faith or that in that first step. It's just like, okay, I believe that this is possible. I believe I'm called to this. And, you know, whether our listeners are, are um, you know, faith-based or not, uh, the idea is if I feel like I'm pulled in this direction here, what do I need to do? You don't have to have it all figured out. It's one one step at a time. I mean, how many times have we all pivoted in life, either by force or by choice? Right. Um, I, that. I never I never dreamt that I'd be an author. And, I you know, having a book, it's dream big, step small. Not sure if you heard, I'll send you a copy. Um, yes. But like, I never thought that I'd, I'd be that. I never thought they could be easy enough to self-publish on Amazon. So um, it was never an opportunity that we have. So keeping our eyes open to the next opportunity instead of having fear about it, looking at like, what are the other opportunities? Um, and just wrapping it up, what I love about your, your marketing angle is that you it's relational. And that is why I believe you're so successful with these things is because human connection is not something you can duplicate in an ad and even right. in copy writing and sometimes it's that human connection that says well i want to buy from this brand or this local store because i know joe who opened this local store by me and i want to support him and i know his story and i know his family and i'd rather go there than spend the money on amazon or whatever that you know a lot of people are, are oriented to or even a, a lawyer or a surgeon or a church a word of mouth on someone you trust and someone that you lean on is so important and that that transcends and, and, and comes into podcasting as well is that mm -hmm. if I'm a podcast listener of you know so and so show and I hear Dustin on that show I already trust the host that I listen to every single week right so if that host brings you on then that host that that person must be just as good because they wouldn't allow you to be on the show if you weren't trustworthy and you know somebody to have on the show so it creates that instant connection already because we have someone that we already like know and trust telling us um, that this other person has something in someone we can know, like, know, and trust as well. And that forms a bond, even even a secondary bond in our minds. I'm walking the dog and listening to Fire Creek Snacks and you talking about that. It's so much of a different bond than I would think of. I saw Slim Jims in the store. Like I, I think more of 
I want to support Dustin and this brand and what he was able to do and the family and all that. I'll never forget that. And just like everyone else, same type of thing. So not underestimating the relational connection, even with beef sticks, you know, that's just what I love about that product is that like we can take something super unsexy, like just eating a beef stick and let making it into some somebody that's brand loyal, just simply because there's a story behind it that they can connect or relate to. So Mm -hmm. relational marketing is is uh, maybe the new coin phrase that you can use there partnership yeah. marketing relational marketing i love it um any last uh, final comments you have about this maybe a, a piece of advice you could give to somebody that says okay i think i could totally be a podcast guest um yeah. for my brand even though my brand might be you know the the doggy wash store or that you know i'm thinking of some of my clients so one of them is grateful gift shop and she has some um gifts for senior citizens and things like that like how what's the first step that they need to take in thinking i want to get my brand out there to talk about yeah man so much stuff came up you just absolutely nailed yeah the whole relational marketing um serving first giving first and again just being radically transparent um that like that makes a huge difference so a couple quick things one is if someone's feeling a little bashful or whatever about like who cares about me? Who cares about my story? I sell pet wash or whatever, you know, like it doesn't even have to be your story. I, most of the time when I'm on shows about Fire Creek, it's more about my business partner, Ryan's story, because he actually created the product. I just brought it online. So if I'm on a marketing show, yeah, we might talk a lot about marketing and how we how we open our Shopify store, but I'm often talking about him. Um, often when I'm talking about podcast guesting, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about clients. And so there's stories all over the place. There's like an abundance of stories. If you don't really have a great story, when I'm going to say create one, that doesn't mean make up a story. That means go do something that gives you something to talk about, right? Um, so I think that, that that's like a, just an encouragement for people. And the other thing I would say too, if they don't really know how to get started, that's why there are coaches in the world. You know, that's why Kristen can make all the money she wants on Amazon, but she has a passion for helping other people do it because she really enjoys that. And I think you even said you enjoy that more than doing it yourself. I'm the same way. Like I could just go sell meat sticks and do a lot more of that. And we're, we're doing very well with that, but I get way more fulfillment out of helping other people sell their products. And so hire a coach, you know, listen to podcasts, read books. But if, if like there's, if someone's saying they're like, yeah, I think I do want to be on podcasts and I do, um, or I do want to lean into a relational marketing and, and like, yeah, first step with that, you know, again, you can like hire a coach. I have free resources on my website, for things like how to craft a really good email pitch to, to, to get on a show um, like really, really quickly. So just get people like make this very feasible feeling. If you're thinking about like, it feels like very um, disconnected from like, you have no idea, like you're listening to this show, but you would have no idea how to ever be on a show like this. Number one, I just, I, talk, I teach five P's. So number one is purpose. And that's really simple. It's like, why would you want to be on the show? And you really have to define that first because that leads to two, which is plan. And that's finding the right shows. So basically doing some basic research. So if I know what I want to, if what I want to talk about, what my call to action is going to be at the end of the show, then I can go f- and I know who my target market is. Then I can go find shows with people like that listening. And then three is pitch. So like once you find the shows, you just have to be able to send a simple email, connect on LinkedIn, however is appropriate for that host and let them know what's in it for them to talk to you. Um, and we've got a templates that we use for that, that make it really easy to think through. Um, so that's three is pitch, uh, four is perform. So that's like, how do you prepare for a show, understand how to introduce yourself. If you've got a couple stories kind of in the, in the tank, it makes it easy to, to kind of naturally include those in the story or in the, in the interview. And then five is profit. And that's mostly what we talk about. like in our mastermind level is we're going to show you how to get on the right shows and tell the right stories and all that stuff. Like, how do you actually make the most profit, you know, the, the leverage those opportunities the most possible? Um, and that's like, yeah, the, the, that, that's the part that I enjoy the most. But th- the key is purpose and pitching, I think, is like the two main things. Just like talk about, figure out what you want to talk about and then go ask somebody to be on their show. And if you're nervous, ask someone you maybe already listened to or know, find someone who's got, you know, a very small audience. So there's very little pressure on you to like, perform well, like you just get your reps in. Um, I do mock interviews with people. So they're like, 
That's I don't really know how, how I would react to different questions. Like let's practice, let's, let's block off 30 minutes and we'll go through and make sure that you feel really comfortable with some of the, the parts of this, this process. So anyway, I know we, I know we're way past time probably. And we could There's talk no forever about thing these things. Past so. time. I'm the interviewer. We can go as long as we want to. <laughs> when things are interesting, I don't cut them off. I don't, unless I had like another appointment here, which I don't, don't always do with these because sometimes these conversations go um, the direction we want them to go or different directions. And I think it's so helpful. I, I want, people to have like you said action creates the confidence there to do the next thing right we have to take right. action and action is the antidote to fear we all have fear especially if you've never appeared on a podcast um and i'm just gonna put that out there too i love i interview clients on a regular basis that are brave enough to come and show their products and talk about them and what they've created it creates um you know if people are listening they create um hey i could buy that for such and such because the product that you're bringing to the table is different than i'm bringing to the table that client X is bringing to the table and right. we can all share the wealth and understand that there and the rising tide raises all ships. So as we're building each other up, um, we're, we're just, we're all building empires together. And I appreciate um, your transparency in that because it really is, um, you know, something that a lot of people fear. Um, but like I, like you said, go do something to talk about. If you feel like there's nothing to talk <laughs> about, you know, create some action there. Um, everyone has a purpose and a plan. And even if your story is only, I say only, cause it's not only everybody's story is unique and important, but if it's story, I, I've heard this from clients. I don't, I don't have much to say. I created my business because I just wanted something that was all my own. That was my, you know, my kids are, I'm, I'm empty nester and my kids are in college now. And I don't, you know, it might not be an income thing. It might just be a purpose thing. Yeah. I wanted to create something that was my own that I could put out there that I could launch, that I could be proud of, that could also create income as well. But like they start with a passion and a purpose rather than the profit side. And that's just an that extra boost. Um, yep. So where, wherever, wherever you guys are, whatever you're doing and whatever you're listening, when you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, that's totally not for me or heck yes, I want to do that. Um, uh, all Dustin's links will be below this video in the shore, in the show notes and everything. So you can reach out to him if you're thinking, yes, I want to do beyond podcasts and I want to figure this out for my brand because I've got a great brand that I'm excited about. Or you're like, well, I want to do that, but I have no idea how and I'm nervous and all that. I love the fact that you do mock interviews like that is so important because people literally I've seen people people like pass out and throw up before like <laughs> taking a stage and stuff like that. I mean, we all get nerves or jitters or, you know, things like that. But if you can practice, practice makes you better. Practice yeah. makes you better. So as you practice, I mean, we're good at interviews because how many of we over 500? Like, I mean, I've done so many interviews that like, it's like, I, I can show up in two minutes and do it, right. but I didn't do that the first time. The first time it was a hot mess and it was a hot mess for a while until you get the hang of it. Um, but it's those little seeds, like you said, they're planting. And so like, you know, eventually they grow into this big entity and all of a sudden you're getting business from all over the place and you can't even necessarily recognize. So the value is so important there. You guys, I understand um, that y'all could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other podcast. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon podcast. Thank you, Dustin, for being part of the show. You guys, firecreeksnacks.com. Um, you can also find them on Amazon and eventually their gift box will be available <laughs> on Amazon as well. And um, thank you for being here and being part of the show. You guys check out Fire Creek Snacks. Also check out sim uh, Simple Success Marketing. Is that what it's called? Simplesuccesscoaching.com. Ah, Close. Okay. Thank you. You should say the link. Say it again for the people <laughs> in the back. <laughs> yeah, simplesuccesscoaching.com. And honestly, if people just have questions, they can email me. It's Dustin, D-U-S-T-I-N, at simplesuccesscoaching.com or at firecreeksnacks.com. Both of them will yeah, come Well, go me. go buy your, <laughs> your B6 because, y'all, these are fantastic. And I'm hoarding these ones because they're the last ones left before I, you know, I, the next time I buy them, it's going to be from the gift box, the wholesale bundle gift box that you're going to put on Amazon. <laughs> Got um, our first so customer. We're good. I'm serious. Send me the link and I will buy it directly from there. So you can, I'll get, I'll leave a review as well. And guess Perfect. what you guys, just to let you know, um, as, as I'm wrapping, wrapping up here, customers, clients, people, if you guys have wholesale bundles out there that you've launched into Amazon and you need a review or you need, um, you know, you, the reviews are important. Send me your link. I will buy your wholesale bundle and I will leave you a review. Um, I will leave an honest review. So be aware of that. I'm not going to leave you a great review just because of that, but I will leave you an honest review. I would love to do that 
that for my customers and clients. So send me your links. I want to be able to buy your products. And if I fall in love with it, y'all know Kristen's favorite things, right? When I fall in love with something, it's hard for me not to talk about it. So if I love your product, it might be featured here on the Amazon Files podcast on the YouTube channel. So um, if you do that, beware, be careful what you wish for, because you might get a whole lot of business that you didn't ask for. So um, anyway, thank you so much for being here, you guys. I know you could be anywhere doing anything. Appreciate your listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.